So we'll give it a minute, Nancy, just for the attendees to populate. Okay. Okay, uh, welcome to this hearing of the Historic District Commission. Our commission acts under the Amherst Local Historic District Bylaw, whose purpose is to aid in the preservation and protection of the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places significant in the history of the town of Amherst. This involves a permitting system under which new construction and most alterations of exterior architectural features in the historic district require one of three certificates. Today, we've got four different properties that are coming to hear from us. And we're going to start, uh, we're doing these in the order in which they were received. And we're starting with 280 Lincoln Avenue. Nate, would you make a presentation? Uh, it was, sorry, it was, um, according to the uh, legal ad, it was 81 McClellan, but do you wanna do? Oh, I'm, I'm just going in the order that they're listed under the packet. Uh, oh, 81 uh, McClellan came first, that's fine. We can go with that one first. So if, if there's anyone here from 81 McClellan, you can raise your hand. Uh, you'll be asked to become a panelist. So the screen, I guess, evidently the screen goes black for a second and then you'll come back, so don't worry. Okay, so uh, Alan Geisen is here. Yep. Uh, Nate, did you wanna make say anything first? Uh, no, I mean, this is, uh, you know, they, uh, the applicant had been here before the commission to change their garage, to change the roof of their garage and a few things and, uh, lighting wasn't included at that time. So this application is to, for exterior lighting, uh, on the garage. So it's not, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Has everybody seen the pictures of the lighting? Uh, I'd like to see them. Alan, if you want me to, I can share the screen or if you're comfortable sharing. Um, do you have a picture? Yes. Of the light? Yeah, no, if you want to do it, that's fine. Yeah. So this, th yeah, so this is the existing garage and locations of electrical. And here's the proposed new lighting. Yeah, the, the garage has been changed. So it actually looks much nicer than what you just showed us. And the, those lighting fixtures look very nice. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the uh, the stealth ones, those are the ones that come on and off when uh, somebody walks into the backyard or are they on all the time? Uh, they'd come on when somebody walks in the backyard and the electrician was able to find the exact same make and model as was on that garage previously. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's uh, only the, there's a light by the door mm -hmm. and then we installed a new door on the, in this video, in this perspective on the back left of the garage and there'd be a, a the identical light there as well. Okay. Uh, I think the, the garage looks very nice. Uh, the lights look nice to me. Uh, do any of the panelists have questions they would like to ask? No. Okay, uh, are we ready to approve this project? Uh, Karin, oh, I'm sorry, Bruce, you had a question? Oh, I was just gonna make a motion to approve. I was thinking this is, uh, what's the wording of this? This is just to uh, 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 approve uh, a supplementary request? Yes, for, for new lighting. Yeah, we yeah. could ask if there's any public comment, uh, just oh. there's a number of public here. Yes, I guess that's true, we should do yeah. that. Is there any public comment? If you have any, please raise your hand. I don't see any uh, hands. I, no one's raising a hand. Okay, uh, Bruce. Um, th this is this is a um, done at a public meeting, so this is not a public hearing. We've had the hearing and so forth. So this is really just a. No, this is actually to... a new, it's a new public hearing just for the lighting. Oh, okay. So we have to move to acceptance. Or m m we, we determine that, uh, uh, move that uh, uh, determination of appropriateness uh, uh, be rendered so far as the lighting is concerned. And therefore, I That's guess good. also move to close the public hearing. Uh, Second. Okay. Uh, we'll move to a vote then. Um, Greta? I vote in favor. 
Uh, Steve? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Karen? Yes. And I approve also. So uh, we are granting you the certificate of appropriateness, Alan. Thank you for coming again to yep, see thanks. us about these things. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, what's the second one, Nate? 58 Sunset. Okay. Do we have anybody here from that? Looks like Chris is here. Okay. And Noah, do, do you want to make them panelists? Yeah, you'll be asked to be promoted to panelist. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Hi, so I'm Chris with Oxbow Design Build. I was the designer on this project. So yeah, Noah's coming in a minute. I, I don't know. It's a little slow right now. Yeah, Noah is also Please. with Oxbow Design Build. He's a head of our design department, a registered architect. Hi, folks. Hello, thank you for coming, both of you. Uh, so, would you like to speak about this request? Sure. Um, so we're looking to replace some of the windows. Um, I had submitted plans, uh, which hopefully have made it to you all. Yes. And looking to replace the windows in keeping with the um, existing style um, on the front of the house. We're looking to change the two on the upper left to more of a cottage style. Great, thank you. Yep, exactly, those two there. Um, and then on the bottom right, we're looking to replace exact same size, style, grill pattern, um, and just adding frosted glass to the one on the left, uh, the one on the right, um, it's just in really bad shape. So we're looking to replace that. And then I believe, Nate, are you sharing your screen? I am, yes. Yep. Great, thank you. Um, could you scroll down? <laughs> or sorry, could you... Are you going to... We could do this, uh, the elevations, yep. maybe? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Yep, so uh, none of this is visible from the public way, but you can see on the main block of the house, uh, we're replacing the basement windows uh, in the same style as everything else on that facade or on that wall of the facade. And then back to the left. So this was, yep, on the first floor section there. Uh, that was a sunroom uh, that we have expanded to um, living space. And so we're adding some sunroom windows there. Uh, the windows on that block of that previous edition did not have any grills, so we're going with that style there. And then same on the basement below, the basement level. So that was an existing covered patio. Um, so we'll look into add windows there again with no grills. Thank you, Nate. Same thing, this is the other side. So right in the center, uh, mark number 54. Yep, thank you. So that is the existing kitchen addition, a previous kitchen addition. Uh, we're looking to add another window uh, just to promote some symmetry there. So exact same uh, size, style, and grill pattern as the existing, just mirrored across that wall. And then over to the right, down in the uh, basement addition area. Yep, looking to add a window there uh, with the grills. And then again on the sunroom, another one of those uh, slider windows. And then Nate, if you wouldn't mind scrolling down. Yep, thank you. So now we're at the back of the house. Um, so We'll start up top on that dormer, um, replacing three windows there uh, with casements, but keeping the existing uh, size, shape, and grill pattern. Uh, sorry, casement and uh, fixed windows. And then down at the bottom, 
um, kind of behind the staircase there, Mark 77 replacement window in keeping with the size and grill pattern. And then over on the right, same thing, two marks, 77. And then in the middle, you know, this is that same uh, basement expansion and what was formerly the screen porch into sunroom. Um, you can see up above on the second floor, this previous addition that had occurred, um, you know, they went with windows with no grills. So we're keeping with that style here, but this is also not visible from the public way, but just while we're at it, we may as well look at it all. And then for siding on this area back here, uh, you know, this addition that was formerly the screen porch and the covered patio of the basement, um, we'll be going with the hardy uh, architectural collection, uh, fine sand panels, uh, which is what they have on that smaller uh, dormer on the second floor uh, that has the, the deck to the left of it in the screen here. Yeah, so the existing, great. Yeah, so the existing is stucco. Um, around back where they had done previous additions, they used the Hardy uh, product that I mentioned. So we'll just be matching that. Right, so this is the north side. So this is where the new window will be. Exactly. That back addition that was mentioned is only visible at a pretty um, tangential angle when you're like, you know, two houses down on the street. So this, the back addition that was, sorry, where, um, that we were mentioning here that mm -hmm. comes out is really only visible at a pretty big angle. So even here, you can't see it, um, but you know, it is slightly visible. So it's under review by the commission. Okay, uh, do we have questions from the panelists? Uh, Bruce. So uh, um, the purpose for the, uh, the all the new windows is it is it uh, it seems that uh, to uh, uh, except on one or two occasions where in, uh, like the kitchen for example where the additional window is being added for some kind of uh, design purpose uh, but the bulk of the windows are being simply replaced. <laughs> um, uh, do I uh, and, and presumably because the existing windows are failing or, or you want to improve the thermal performance or some reason like that is that the purpose uh, that's correct the, that's yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt yeah that is the main purpose um we are also going to be engaging with a historic window uh restoration contractor to restore all of the other existing windows in the house that are able to be restored um, but those ones in particular are in pretty bad shape um, and so the most cost effective and productive course of action was to replace them in kind. Okay, that anyone... sounds pretty, pretty impressive. Are there other questions from the panelists? Um, do we have any comments from our audience? Uh, looks like Ken Rosenthal wants to make a comment. Sure. Ken, you can unmute uh, yourself. Thank you. I'm Ken Rosenthal. I live at 53 Sunset Avenue directly across the street. So I'm probably the one who has the most uh, consistent view of this property. They're doing a lot of work, a lot of hard work. And as far as this particular application is concerned, I want you to know I have no objection to it. And, uh, have, and, and I think that's all I have to offer. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, are there any other comments, uh, Bruce? I think if I'm, we had a, um, a an earlier application for this project a few weeks ago, it was to we do did. with lighting and so forth. And so I visited this site then, and uh, it, it, it did seem as though this was, a, as Ken says, a very deliberative kind of. So um, based on what we've heard <laughs> and what we've heard previously and, and what I at least have seen, I... Uh, uh, um, move that uh, a certificate of appropriateness be uh, 
uh, be approved, uh, be awarded uh, for the uh, scope of work window replacement as presented, um, uh, and findings uh, consistent with the um, uh, sections eight point one and two of the of our bylaw. Uh, do I have a second? A second. Karen, uh, um, I think Greta said. Oh, am are we voting now? We're voting. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Greta. Yes. Steve. Yes. Uh, Bruce. Uh, and I also uh, approve granting this certificate. So uh, you will have your certificate of appropriateness. Uh, and thank you for bringing the project to us. Great. Thank you all very much. I just want to let much. you know as thank well, you. Nicole Miller is now on the telephone. And I can unmute huh. myself. Um, I've now been listening on. Oh, would you I don't you like know to, how I look, whatever. You, you look like a telephone. Uh, would you uh, care to vote on this project? Um, yes, I vote yes. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, you have your certificate of appropriateness. We appreciate your coming before the commission and uh, sending these nice designs to us. Great, thanks so much for all your time. Thanks everyone. Thank you everyone. I think the Thank next you. one is 280 Lincoln. Is that right, Nate? Yes. Um, if someone we have can anybody start... from this? Yeah. Is anyone here from 280? Yes. Okay. Uh, Patricia Stacy is here. I'll just get everything ready. Hold on. My end. Thank you for coming, Patricia. Uh -huh. Thank you for having me. Uh, I don't know whether you wanted to present this or Nate, uh, what's better? Uh, so I'm sorry about the grass behind me. I <laughs> Very attractive. It just sort of popped up. <laughs> um, Nate, would you be willing to show the, the photos that I submitted? Yeah. I see we could start with, I mean, just, I don't want to jump around too much. The... Um, yeah, so here are the plans. And uh, you know what what's being proposed is this dormer addition on the south side of the roof uh, for attic access. And then this existing window right now is a double window and it's proposed to become a, a three, you know, three windows, uh, same size opening. And so um these are the plans showing everything. As far I know, as far as you know, every I know there's no other changes. So here's the front of the house. With the existing window and then the side of it which is you know difficult to see but the dormer would be up you know up here so patricia i don't know if you have anything else to add to that or uh not really um no i think that that was a very efficient way to describe it thank you uh, do we have uh questions from the panelists Bruce. Um, the the dormer um, is the only essentially new thing, I guess, uh, and the, the siding material uh, that is uh, proposed for the so-called cheek, which is the, the, the vertical triangular uh, sides of the uh, dormers on either side and, and probably around the windows, is that a, a matching... Uh, um clabbered to the rest of the house is it uh, is it wood or presumably a, perhaps a um something more durable than wood what are you proposing to use there um that's a good question but it would the it would either be wood or something more durable mm -hmm. like a hardy board i mean but, but it would it would be meant meant to match the clabbers it, it would be to match so we would understand that it would look uh, very similar and probably yes. indistinguishable at a distance. Yes. Um, I think the, the I'm, I'm puzzled as to, I mean, I don't think it affects my decision about the appropriateness particularly, but I'm puzzled as to why uh, you would choose to uh, take out the 
the window the double window that's sitting there nicely and seemingly agreeably enough and replace it with a triple what's what's driving that decision um that's a complicated situation it was i began working with a woman who was um a, who was a designer and she was very enthusiastic about this as a choice um, and I thought it was, I thought it was pretty. And so I said, okay. Um, and she actually, it was a bizarre, this was like several months ago and she encouraged me to buy this window. <laughs> so I now own this window <laughs> oh, and don't okay. let it, that's fine. I can do, I can deal with buying a new window if you deem that I, it should be double. I think it's kind of pretty. So I'm, you know, it's a fine it's a fine solution for me. Um, but it was just a misunderstanding. She was originally from Maine. She didn't understand that I was going to need to have it approved. And I, at the time I was just you know, envisioning this process um, kind of abstractly. So um, I'm, you know, I, I will bow to whatever you decide. Well, I guess I should say that I regard it as quirky, but I don't think I would uh, descend to uh, judging it as being inappropriate. I, I would prefer the double window simply because it's there and because it's uh, it looks nice and it would save you money. Um, and uh, and I don't think you need more. I don't think you need to put three windows in to get my vote. Um, but I don't think putting three windows in will um, will lose my vote either. But I I, I was curious because it, it seemed like an odd thing, quirky. But the narrative of historic buildings uh, over periods, uh, there's all sorts of quirky things that happen. And to some extent, that's what makes for interesting stories about old buildings. So um, I'll stop there. Do we have any other questions from other panelists? Do we have any questions from um, attendees? Uh, if not, do I have a motion to approve this certificate of appropriateness? How about someone other than me this time? <laughs> okay, I'll take the honors. I move to grant this property a certificate of appropriateness. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Bruce? Approve. Steve? Yes. Uh, Nicole? Yes. Frida? Yes. Uh, and Karen? Yes. And I approve it also. So uh, Patricia, we're very happy to uh, extend to you the certificate of appropriateness. And I like your three windows. I think it'll look nice. Uh, you have I also you like your siding. The the top siding being different than the bottom is really pretty. The Thank work. you. Thank you for your help. I really appreciate it. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Nancy. Though. No, that's fine. I think we're we're all set with this one. Um, and this brings us to our final project, uh, which is at ninety eight Fearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, uh, I think Charles Roberts is here. And it looks like Tom Reedy is also here, would like to be promoted. Sure. And Jeff Squire, I believe. Uh, yes. Yes. All right, uh, thank you for coming to our meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Nate, did you want to begin by presenting this? Uh, no, I think we can let the applicants do that. You know, it's a proposal to put a new um, three unit structure in the back of 98 Fearing with, you know, other site improvements with fence, drainage, infrastructure. Uh, we made a site visit on Thursday of last week and I took some photographs that I uploaded to the online packet. Um, yeah, I mean, I think after, and there was some supplemental information submitted by Charles. So 
I think, you know, if they want to share their screen and walk through it, then I can always, you know, chime in where needed. Okay. I should, I'm sorry, I, I uh, should have said at the very beginning of this meeting that uh, we have all signed uh, disclosures that we are not influenced by uh, our own uh, proximity to these properties um, that we've talked about today. So I just want you to know that. Uh, and, and I want to remind the panelists that uh, we can only talk about things that actually affect the historic nature of the neighborhood, the size, the uh, massiveness of these projects. We can't talk about other uses. And with that, uh, would one of you like to begin uh, by presenting this project? Sure, I'll start. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm, Ch I'm Charles Roberts, and I have Jess Squire with me here from Berkshire Design Group, and Tom, <laughs> attorney Tom Reedy from Bacon and Wilson, who's who's representing clients. And um, I will share my screen. Okay, is everybody seeing the uh, the cover sheet here? Are folks seeing the cover sheet? Yes. yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so this this is a ninety eight Fearing Street. This is a, a photograph of the of the house from the street. I'll get into more details we go through here, but just to start off with that image. Um, this this is a, a reminder of something we talked about 14 months ago, uh, back in February 2023. This was the a scheme that we were originally considering. It was uh, it was three duplexes um, with uh, with a total of six four bedroom units, and we were and we were uh, um, tearing down the the existing garage here to to create more parking for the development, and um, and. Um, we heard, we got lots of good feedback from this board and we, you know, we, we heard everything that was said and we've, we've, we've scaled this back now, um, to instead of three buildings, it's now one building instead of six units it's three units and it's a one, four bedroom unit and then two, three bedroom units. So we've, we've reduced it considerably, um, from I think 24 beds down to 10. So, um, significant reduction. And and we think it we think it makes a better project, and, and we appreciate the input we've received so far from this board. So, with that, I will um, I will proceed on with our presentation. So this is the subject site, 98 Fearing Street, with that uh, with the, you know in the, in the bullseye there, um, Fearing Street running east to west, um, Lincoln north to south, just to get everybody oriented. Um, this is the. This kind of gives you a sense of the massing of the footprint we're proposing relative to the, the, the garage and the existing house and some of the buildings in the neighborhood. Um, just so you can read the overall development pattern and, uh, and sort of get a sense of the, of the density in the neighborhood and some of these neighboring streets and, and the impact of this, uh, this particular footprint relative to the, the existing densities. Um, these, are, these are a couple of shots. Um, just to provide some context, this is 85 Sparing Street, just just down the street, views into uh, into the the back lot here. So it's a, a, a sort of a I guess it's a Greek Revival farmhouse building facing on the street with back buildings and parking and sort of density happening behind the front of the street in the lot. Um, this is a this is a view down. Uh, uh, 312 Lincoln Lincoln Avenue, just as a remind you know reminder sort of the density and the proximity of houses to each other, and that UMass is always kind of looming in the background. It's a this is definitely a, a neighborhood that's that's it's in a lot of ways like I understand the sensitivity is because transitional between what's overtly UMass and then what sort of moves into to some of the more historic fabric of this neighborhood. A um, couple of, of uh, smaller houses over on on. Um, Cosby, Cosby Avenue, just to, again, bringing in scale and architectural character uh, in the, it's, it's typical of this neighborhood. Um, uh, 1517 um, Cosby Avenue, another example of, of a larger structure with a, with, with a existing house with a, with, a, with a kind of a larger structure behind and garage and and uh, you know car circulation and, and sort of you know activity in the back to towards the back of the house and in the back part of the lot. Um, these are just some 
uh, Berkshire Design Group put together this uh, this uh, GIS mapping just because we were curious what is what is the demographic of 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 housing types that we're seeing in this immediate neighborhood. So these so this yellow square here is uh, is 98 Fearing, and the green squares show uh, two family houses within within 500 feet of of our property. So a smattering of, of two family properties. Um, three families within 500 fewer but they but they are they are in existence um kind of mediums within 500 feet so i'm guessing that because i'm guessing that there are some condos that are also rentals because there's overlap between the condominium map and, and the rental map um but this shows the condominiums in the neighborhood and then overall rental property so so again, you know, more more densely rental towards UMass. This is like a, this is definitely a transitional street. Lots of rental properties, you know, here um, along uh, North Pleasant, and I think it's it's kind of you know it talks about sort of the issues that we're dealing with and facing um, when, when you know in in developing and, and and sort of the housing types we we look at for our properties in town here. Here's our here's our subject property, ninety eight Fairing. So this house was built in 1927. It's interesting because it was considered a contemporary at the time because the rest of the houses on the street were mostly revival homes, Greek revival. Um, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't know. <laughs> and uh, and um, but it was it was originally developed as a two family. Somewhere along the line, it was uh, it became a three family, and it was a three family, I believe, when my clients purchased it. So it's uh, it's got a couple of different siding types, shingles and clapboards. It has a it has sort of a quirky window layout. No two windows are really the same. They're a combination of double hums and uh, sort of oriented, you know, towards the street. It has kind of a nice formal presentation that makes sense with these two blocks facing the street, each having kind of a symmetrical sensibility. As you move around the house, the window patterns kind of change, and the the symmetry breaks down, and it's really about providing light and air to the spaces within the building itself. So it's kind of a Interesting the way the architecture developed here um, with a formal face towards the street. And again, it's sort of breaking down. Another thing about this house that's interesting, it seems like it's on the high point almost of, of the, uh, the south side of Fearing Street. So, you know, it sits very tall on the site. It's two and a half stories on top of a probably a three to four foot foundation wall. And so it uh, it's it, it has a lot of a lot of presence on the street. This is uh this is a view of the house, um, I guess from the from the the northeast, looking looking down the driveway to the garage and back, and then this next view here is a before and after. So this is showing um, the what our building is going to look like, sort of peeking out and back. I'll, I'll, I'll get in, you know, obviously more detail with this, but um, the the forms kind of break down with with a dormer and an e that comes down and sort of matches the scale of the uh, of the garage and really get a sense of the building being you know, tucked in behind this existing house and we're working to minimize the impact on the street and, and what is visible from the street works architecturally and building form with what's there with the garage and these gables sort of transfer you know uh, melding in with the building shapes that we're proposing. This is a view um, down, looking down the corridor. This is an existing tree on the left, which we're going to keep. And this is a, an existing nice pine tree. Uh, I guess it's a, I don't know if it's a white pine or a spruce. I'm sure Jeff knows. Um, and then the, the, the after shot uh, is where we're maintaining that the pine tree. There's going to be a fence, fen uh, six foot fence built in along here behind the pine tree. And this is all plantings that are going to be brought in. And you can just barely see the gable form of of our house sort of poking out here between the uh, the the existing pine tree and the existing house. So just kind of do a you know before and after thing there. So again, with a with a with the building kind of set back sixty or eighty feet from the existing building, the screening coming in, the the overall impact on the street is greatly reduced. This is a view down uh, the yards, uh, the yard from uh, uh, Lincoln Avenue, and um, so what we're proposing is a line of arborvitae screening in here to screen the parking and also offer protection for the 
for this for the neighboring house. With the way these trees are leafed out, believe it or not, our model is in there, lurking in there, but it really you, it, you can't really see it because of the uh, the existing garage and the screening we're bringing in, and then and then the foliage that's there. But I think what's what's kind of nice about this shot is that it shows how the the parking area becomes screened from uh, from uh, from Lincoln and also from the, from from the neighbors' backyards, and it helps kind of soften and mitigate the development on the an impact on the overall neighborhood. This is a view of what we're proposing. This is as you're coming down the driveway and just sort of veering left. You see the the eave of the garage here on the right, and this is the uh, this is the building we're proposing. On the left is that is the four uh, the four bedroom unit. It's a it's, uh, um, it's in built in two stories, um, uh, living on the first floor in one bedroom, and then three bedrooms up above. And then the this this part of the building over here is the uh, is uh, two flats, two three bedroom flats to stack over one another. You 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 come in through the front porch. You enter into a common vestibule and up the stairs to the uh, to the, the the upper level apartment. And then through uh, uh, straight on into the downstairs apartment, and we were really working to to drop the scale of this building. I think porches are a great way of adding detail, human scale, architectural interest, and character, and you know help soften the, the mass. I also and, and also you know popping out dormers to get headroom in the second floor and and letting the eaves of the building drop down is another nice way of of of, of softening the scale of the buildings. Um, these are these are um, unapologetically arts and crafts buildings um, using combinations of of, uh, of board and batten and clapboard siding, typical of arts and crafts buildings, you know, throughout and um, tapered columns and and a nice generous woodworking and trim and built up on the eaves and freeze boards along the, along the dormers and then uh, uh, appropriately scale um, picture frame window trim. We're, we're, there is order to our windows. They're not random. We're using, we're, we're trying to create more of a cohesive language here. These are um, all casements and awnings um, detailed with uh, with check rails to read like double hung windows, but but offering the performance, energy performance of a casement window as opposed to double hungs. So you get the look of a double hung and the performance of a casement. These are, these help just sort of Give you a sense of the of the scale of the two buildings on the lot and the garage and kind of the distance separating in between and and the parking area in the middle. Um, um, again, the existing garage. The, the existing garage is going to be used in, as a uh, bike storage and sort of garbage maintenance um, utility shed. So it actually has function and and becomes a uh, actually an asset to the property. I think because. You know, people have safe places to store their bikes and the garbage is out of the house and off the street. So it's it's a good function for the building. This is just a, a view from the southeast, giving a sense of the, uh, the proximity of the buildings to one another. This is a, a 12 car parking spot, a parking lot here in the middle, I'm sorry, with, a, with one accessible space. So 12 spaces, one of them accessible. Overall, there's three units in the existing house and three units in the proposed house, so six units and uh, 12 parking spaces. This is a site section, rendered site section, again, just giving you uh, a sense of the scale of the buildings as they move through the site and from the other side. What something that we're, we wanted to, you know, bring to everybody's attention is this, this uh, Yard drain here, which, uh, which which Jeff will talk more about for for managing stormwater on the property, and uh, we can get into that a little bit more further on down the road here. These are the uh, the, the architectural elevations. So a lot of you know a lot of the points I was bringing up when we were looking at the renderings ring true here in terms of the scale of the dormers and the materiality with the board and batten and and, and clabbered and generously proportioned trim. The overall building height here is not to be too fine about it, but it's 29 foot, four and a half inches. Um, so that's 29 foot, 29 foot six, 29 foot four, whatever, to the to the peak of the building is roughly what we're what we're looking at here for the for the height of this building. 
materials are called out here, um, composite, trim, um, fiber cement, uh, clobber, um, and uh, board and battens, and uh, you know some some wood trim details here for these uh, the, these uh, roof overhangs out of the side entrances. I, I did correctly. I named these. I got the elevation uh, points correct, Steve. So thanks for pointing that out to me earlier. Um, and then the uh, the south and west elevations. This is a little side porch um, on the on the east elevation that serves as the second means of egress for both of the uh, the uh, the three bedroom units. Again, it's a nice way of kind of dropping down scale and providing some coverage for folks. Um, I wanted to try and, and get a sense of, I know there's like a lot of, but there's, it's important to know what the scale of our building is relative to the existing building. So I went out on the site and, and did, did some measurements and you'll see this, this, this survey rod here is 14 foot six high. So I leaned it against the house in a number of these places, locations, and then was in the, in the garage as well, was able to scale the photo, scale the photographs in my, in our, in our software. And then, and then get what I'm thinking of a probably pretty accurate nominal height. So I have a height to the peak of the, the high point of the existing house. So this gable runs parallel to Fearing Street of 30 foot, eight inches. Um, and then as you're looking at the house, you know, from Fearing Street, that lower sort of dormered bay that comes down is, is 27 foot zero. Um, so, and then the garage itself is about 19 feet. So our building height is 29 foot six, plus or minus, and these are about 30 foot six. So we're about a foot lower or close to being the same in height. And I think it's, I think it's, it's important to remember that, that this building is located 80 feet behind this building. And so it's going to, you know, recede into the background. And, uh, and again, as I think those views demonstrated that we looked at really becomes you know, a, a very secondary low impact um, visually from the street. And when you do see it, it's working and it's tying in with the existing architecture in ways that I think are, in, are, are interesting and, and, and compatible and appropriate. Um, I was asked to, uh, to show the comparative footprint. So the existing footprint is 1,230 square feet nominally. We're proposing 2,010 uh, square feet, so roughly 800 square feet more. Um, I think one of the things, what, one of the uh, one of the strategies we were looking at with this building was was breaking it down into into pieces that are smaller. So when you look at the width of the width of this building relative to the width of these bays here, the building does, in spite of in spite of its you know the fact that it's got an 800 square foot greater footprint, the scale of it breaks down. And it's and it, and it reads intelligibly with the existing building and and those 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 um, front facing gable forms become I think I think compatible and and in scale with the existing building through that kind of through that move. Um, these are just some examples of the siding looking at with the uh, fiber cement board and batten below. Um, uh, clabbers above and then freeze, you know, freeze board and cap flashing separating out the different um, siding types horizontally and then the picture frame windows. Very similar to the, the materials we'd be looking at in our building. Um, just another example uh, of, of uh, board and batten and clabbered and, and trim. Obviously ours is going to be great, excuse me. But you know, similar composition of materials and, and, and trim bank, trim language and vocabulary. Um, a darker architectural style um, asphalt shingle roof we'd be proposing. Um, these are the, the windows we're looking at. Um, we're, we're, right now we're looking at uh, Marvin. Um, God, they just rebranded. It's a, the, the the integrity window. It's a it's a high performance fiberglass window, uh, fiberglass frame for to eliminate or help reduce thermal bridging. Again, casement window for kind of air tightness and energy performance. And, uh, and it's a quality window. So that's what we're looking at for our, our window package. Um, here we are at the site plan. So thought it would be nice to kind of walk through 
the building and the design and our thoughts about the architecture relative to the neighborhood and then let Jeff come in and talk a little bit about some of the site design ideas. And I have, I also have, yeah, so I have another one. Yeah, I also have that section. Okay, Jeff, I want you to uh, take it away. Thanks, I won't repeat a lot of the information, but yeah, I think obviously the goal with, with the overall site plan and project was to, um, to put the proposed building in a in a location on the site that wasn't um, you know inherently obvious uh, and visible from the street, so being thoughtful to the way that's located relative to, to site distances, um, and in places where some of those views you know were a little bit more open, uh, proposing um, you know wood wood fencing, um, stockade fencing, or or shrub plantings, uh, hedges to to block those views. Um, and help you know, buffer you know the 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 new building um, stormwater management um, we are dealing through um, a couple of different there's a small rain garden um, adjacent to the to the new building and then a larger um, uh, stormwater element um, that he was just pointing to uh, to handle the parking lot and essentially what we're proposing there is um, just a small grass you know, uh, depression really um, and they're on the the fearing street elevation to hide you know any of the the yard drain or you know the the sort of unsightly nature of a you know small depression if if that was a, a um, if that was disruptive is to locate a stone wall along the front of the property with some um, plantings behind it very reminiscent of what is occurring at some of the other residents um, further um, I think it's for the east on on Fearing Street, but there's a number of old field stone walls um, that line the front of the uh, site, and so this would that is is being proposed here as a way to hide, you know, any unsightly infrastructure if there was any. But it's really very minimal. The majority of it is um, just subtle grading um, and plantings. New utilities are coming in off of Fearing Street. Um, and yeah, I think I think really just trying to limit the amount of disturbance on the site and locate the building in a in a location that um, wasn't wasn't going to be too disruptive to to the neighborhood was the primary uh, consideration with the with the location. So um, plantings are are native, um, so I don't expect any issues um, on that front. So yeah, I don't know. Happy to answer There's any other questions. Um, this is that, so this is, this is a site section that Jeff did. This shows mm -hmm. that, um, that kind of depression area in here, which is meant as a, as a catchment area for, for uh, stormwater from the parking lot, right, Jeff? Yes, correct. Yeah. And, uh, so in the section here, this is fearing streets down here. Right. And, yeah. So that, um, stone wall. Yes. It's kind of small. I don't know if I can zoom in or not. Yeah. But it really is very, yep, very subtle depression with, yep. So the storm drain would be located there more or less. Correct. And then um, I have a couple images here if I can get to them. You probably saw most of these because they were in the package, but um, this is, this isn't on Fearing Street. This was, this was just an example of a stone wall image that I found that's it's it's you know similar to the uh, to the, the the native stone around here either the uh, the Goshen stone or um, uh, there's another quarry around here that has a similar sort of stone to it. Um, this next this image here is is from down the street. So this is a this is this is this is like a stack um, uh, dry stack stone wall with some landscaping behind it. So similar similar to that. To that Kind of a, a kind of a wall with wall facing the street and then landscaping behind and then the yard drain and and sort of depression swell behind that it it really is minimal impact on the street um let me see what else, what else we, so this is what the yard drain looks like so it's it's not it's not like this army corps of engineers cast you know things sticking out of the ground. All all the all the infrastructures below ground, the catch basin, and this is all you'll all you'll see is this 
is this kind of 12 inch diameter, roughly 12 inch diameter um, ductile iron grill. And then uh, I think I would, rather than end it on the, on the, on the drain, I thought I would just end it with this image. And uh, yeah, uh, free, to, free to take questions. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Greta. Just have a quick question, and it's not about the proposal you're making, but you bought the house in 21, but I looked at the view from Lincoln, and that would have been really nice if you had screened the parking that is there now. So that was just my little, I thought, well, if they're proposing screening the parking, maybe if they had done it already, we could envision it. It would have been a nice thing to do for the neighbors when you got it in um, 2021. Anyway, that's just my comment. Uh, other panelists. Bruce. Chuck, uh, a simple clarification uh, question. Um, the the images you show of the house, uh, I can see um, the arts and crafts uh, uh, installation and so forth and it's all clear and I agree that you've succeeded in uh, designing that building which is larger in footprint and probably in volume possibly in volume as well such that it doesn't look any larger than the front house um, as we look at the siding um, you don't seem to have corner boards on there so I had assumed that you were using shingles but I think you said not I think you said you were going to use uh, um siding materials is that correct so is is, is are you um if you just are your images which are pretty thoroughly uh developed uh, but they don't seem to have corner boards on them so i'm wondering what the uh whether you intend to or or or, or then they haven't shown yet or whether there's some um uh, weaving arrangement that would cause you not to have corner boards no there's um there's first of all the the woven corner boards are I mean, the woven, the woven um, corners for clabbers is a, is a really classic and beautiful detail that used to be really a lot easier to do when clabbers were made out of wood. But now mm. that we're using fiber cement clabbers, you weave these, you, 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 there's a, there's a aluminum trim cap you can buy that kind of joins the corner together and then it paints out and basically disappears. So it, it it's a way of replicating um, a woven cedar or, or wood clabber corner board in fiber cement. So you 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 you're you able to attain that that look without mm -hmm. corner boards. So to be clear, you're not proposing corner boards. Uh, what 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 we see is what we get. Right. Good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, I just want to also talk about. Um, our job is to is to look at the mass and the scale and the relationship with the neighborhood and to protect the historic neighborhood. And I don't see this development doing that at all. I think it is out of scale. Some of the pictures you showed are not in the local historic district, but the ones. But this is part of the local historic district. And after we met so nicely with Charles, thank you for meeting with us. I walked around the neighborhood, and you can see that you will be able to see that out of scale. Um, in relationship to the neighborhood and the giant mass from Lincoln. And then on Cosby, you can see it. And then going down page, there it, rise, it would rise again. So I, don't, I think that from my point of view, it doesn't meet any of those criteria. I think if you came back and had the garage, there's a really lovely little garage on McClellan that is an apartment. That I would be in favor of. I think that would be fitting it with the neighborhood. So. That's my thought. Thank you. Other comments? I have to say I'm inclined to agree with Greta uh, that it's out of scale with the rest of the neighborhood. In fact, it's out of scale with the house that's in front of it. It's got a larger footprint. It is just a tiny bit shorter. And in the pictures that you've drawn and shown, uh, you don't show it rising to just within uh, less than a foot of the house in front of it. You make it look like it's about half the size of the house in front of it, which it is not. Um, that to me, that's a real concern that it would really change the way this neighborhood looks um, to suddenly have such a large piece of the backyard taken up with another structure. Uh, great, uh, Karen. Um, 
uh, first of all, I thank you for this. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for this presentation. It was uh, really detailed and your architecture, I think, does a beautiful job of trying to echo um, what's there. But I agree with uh, Greta that what we have to look at is preserving the historical nature of the neighborhood. And if you go, we it is a, it's a delicate balance because as you so well pointed out with uh, showing what our three family houses, and by the way, there are three family houses, there aren't six family houses and they're not family houses. Again, they're designed as we can see by the residents of this three family house designed to be just a uh, single people, unrelated people that are living in it. So the whole scale of it means that it becomes much more of a commercial, um, uh, a commercial enterprise, a commercial enterprise in the middle of a historical neighborhood, which is trying, struggling to maintain its identity. Uh, and we worry about when we, the president of, of, you know, utilizing all this ground space and putting in your very lovely design that's going to tip the scale. And then the other residential areas are going to go the same route and the 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 neighbors on the left and the right there that are whose yards are right next to it there's no way that you can protect the you know their privacy from some housing that's high an arba vida hedge is not going to prevent anybody on the third floor from looking over at the swimming pools that are on the left and the right so we're concerned about the massing but what you've done, I mean, I compliment you on it. You've done a beautiful job. I'm, they hired a very talented architect to do this. It's just our, our mandate is to preserve the historical nature of the neighborhood. And that's what we're concerned about. Thank you, Karen. Other comments from the panelists? Um, yeah, I can add to that. I think um, definitely trying, you know, the the plants and fences are going to kind of mask what you're seeing from the street, but you don't just get that straight on angle. I think that's where we, there there is no way to not be able to see the much larger parking lot and the additional building is, you know, even even though you know things are um, being put into place to not see it as um, starkly, it, it's still gonna you can still see the top half over over a six foot fence and things like that. So I think the um, especially kind of not even straight on, but at the angle through the driveway going up fearing and especially it was very um, dominant when you were looking on Lincoln through the backyards of the other homes that it would be straight on um, to the parking lot and to the additional building. So uh, again, I feel that these additional structures, the additional parking lot is much more of a commercial uh, feeling rather than a residential feeling um, that the property is being turned into. Um, and just the, I mean, from a realtor's perspective of kind of moving from that, people can purchase a four unit and below with a residential uh, mortgage versus once it gets larger than that, you're into a commercial mortgage is again, just changing that notion of what this property is in the middle of a local historic district a neighborhood that is trying to you know, stay as a residential neighborhood that I think is, is really changing the property substantially. Um, I, what I personally, I'm not saying that it's cost effective, but I personally would like to see that garage turned into one unit. And if you're wanting to add a unit, add it to the one garage. I'm not saying it'd be cost effective. I'm just saying that you have an existing building that could be worked into 
one additional unit um, that would obviously not give you anywhere near the income that um, this unit you're pr proposing does, but that's one way to kind of work with the existing property that you have. I think it's likely that as a commission, we would be more inclined to accept uh, a conversion of that garage into an apartment than this large structure in the backyard. Uh -huh. It's Steve. interesting. I mean, I mean, the, the garage would have to be, I mean, to just, I, I totally understand what you're saying, but just from a practicality point of view, the garage would have to be completely dismantled. And then a foundation has to be poured. And then at that point, it's going to be cheaper to rebuild the garage with new materials than it would be to try and repurpose the old materials. And so it would be, you, you would essentially be building a new structure that replicates the existing garage to do that. So it's just right or wrong, just logistically, it's kind of an interesting, interesting problem. Steve. Uh, yeah, um, I agree with all the commissioners about how big the building is, but uh, my biggest, con but I also wanna applaud the, um, I think this is much more contextual than before and I appreciate your efforts in downsizing it. The parking lot is just inappropriate for the rest of the neighborhood. There's no parking lot that's within the district anywhere near that size. And I think it's, I don't know if this is within the purview of the commission, but I do feel it's incumbent upon me to mention this. The one with the egress to the parking lot, uh, which is going to be for 12 cars, but there's, you know, the kid, there was, when we were there, spaces were used in front of the garage. So it really comes up to 15 or 16. The egress is only one car away. And when we were there, it was a mess. I mean, there were people like saying, could you move your car? And then you couldn't go in and out. And, and particularly on such a busy street, to have a traffic jam coming from that such a big parking lot in a residential neighborhood is not only problematic, but it's really dangerous. And it is something that I plan to bring up with the ZBA uh, because when we were there, it was like, can you back up? Can you do this? Can you? It was like just a mess. And that's just during the 10 minutes of, that we were there. Uh, so I would strongly urge you to reduce the um, parking. Um, uh, anyway, that's what I'd say. Chris? Can I, can I, can I speak briefly oh. to that? Yeah. Um, so right now, the pavement, the, the parking in the back, First of all, I don't disagree with you. It was a little chaotic because it, we were there. We all had our cars. The people were living there. So that was a little bit of an unusual circumstance, I think. But but in the, the back right now is, is pretty much undefined chaos when it comes to our cars and circulation. You can park in front of the garage, but then you're blocking people behind the house. The pavement comes right up to the house, like with, to within 18 inches. And so there's 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 very little actual traffic control that happens and so and so while while we may be creating more dedicated parking spaces the i think i think in the end it actually becomes more controlled because because there are defined parking areas defined dials of circulation defined turning or turning radii with uh with um with with the way that the uh the, the landscape island peninsulas are, are working and so and so um I think in terms of what's actually going on in the parking lot, this design makes things a little bit safer and doesn't make the driveway any wider, but I think it makes the way cars come and go and park and circulate within that site less chaotic. Bruce? Um, I'm, uh, I declare myself on the architecture and I as a, have a number of us, uh, but I do agree with Steve, particularly um, uh, on the both the question on the on the on the fact that you've reduced the scale uh, from what it was when we came in, which we all found kind of absolutely astonishing, and and were somewhat gobsmacked that the that such an idea would be presented and so forth, with the hope of getting some appropriateness, and maybe that was to condition us to be more agreeable to something that's. Uh, less uh, invidious than the one that was uh, put before us uh, some time ago. So the question then, I think, 
uh, is, 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 is as far as appropriateness of this project is concerned is the scale. Um, and I think I agree with you, Steve, that it's more to do with the parking lot than the buildings. The parking lot is a, is a consolidated, uh, single paved uh, uh, mass of asphalt. It's not broken up. Well, and it, it could be, I suppose, but that would make it worse because then the, there would be more asphalt uh, getting to parking areas distributed around the property, which, uh, so you can't go that route. I see that. So you're reduced to a single large uh, efficient from the point of view of uh, traffic movement and, and economy of pavement. Uh, but it, it it's nonetheless uh, a, a large um, uh, object. And so the question that I'm wrestling with is, uh, what is the, where does, where does scale become appropriate with this? And it wasn't appropriate with the uh, 24 units. And uh, the question is uh, bedrooms and is it appropriate now? Certainly one building rather than four or three, I beg your pardon, and so forth is heading very much in the right direction. And I, as I've said earlier, I think that so far as the buildings are concerned, I'm, um, I, I, I can be more or less satisfied. But I think that it's still generating an inappropriateness so far as the scale uh, of the parking that's necessary to support uh, essentially six units. Um, and uh, I don't know what you can do about that other than make it smaller. Uh, it seems to me that that it's it is still a, a transgression uh, from a p p point of view of appropriateness in terms of the scale uh, and particularly the scale as 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 uh, as, as represented by the size and and uh, of that parking area because it, it really isn't uh, something that you see around the the residential area of, of uh, the historic district it's i just it's a it's a commercial scale a commercial appeal and and uh, of of that uh, that just uh, seems to be still troublesome to me. Um, that's enough for now. Karen. Yeah, I agree. And even though if these cars are um, being able to move in a more efficient way, if not as chaotic, you're still adding um, to the three units. Now you're, you're adding three more. So you're going to have so many more cars and, and visitors. And it just, it's it just doesn't work i think i would urge i like nicole's suggestion that in terms of fitting in with the residential nature of this historic district the neighborhood it would be so much more to your advantage and i think that the the um you know the commission would maybe be open to be not keeping the uh, the existing garage, but replacing it so that economically, maybe you have one more unit, and you already have a three family house on that that lot, which fits in so well. And with the neighborhood, um, that would be something that I could support uh, much more enthusiastically than what is now proposed. Frida. I guess um, I don't see my job as doing a compromise with your first proposal because that was your first proposal, but it didn't fit at all in our job, which is to look at, um, to be part of the local historic district and to look at the mass and the scale and the relationship in the neighborhood and preserving the historic, um, uh, protecting the historic district. So I'm putting the first aside as um totally and but I think this one is out of scale the relationship it it doesn't work for me at all either I agree with Nicole that there is a nice garage that it has been converted on McClellan that I had a friend live in for maybe 20 years so a long-term tenant loved living there small space fit in the neighborhood but beyond that I don't see a commercial six family unit coming into the local historic district so. That's my thought. Nate. Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, the, the bylaw doesn't, um, you know, uh, it limits the review of say a parking area. You know, we've, we've talked about having some, you know, adding that and that's not in there yet. But I think in so much as the parking lot 
uh, drives the massing of the building or its relationship or location on the lot, then the parking could be, you know, manipulated, right? So if the commission finds that the building could be moved to have a better scale or have something, then, you know, the site design would have to change in response to that. So I just want to reiterate that for the commission and the public that, you know, this isn't about the use of the property and who lives there. It's really about the appearance, appearance and, um, you know, visible architectural features that, you know, and it's visible from, as um, people have said, at least three, possibly four streets. So it's not just what's visible from Fearing, it's also Lincoln and Cosby and, you know, it's any public way, uh, even if that way is outside the district. And so, uh, you know, I, you know, if the commission has any clarifying questions or comments, I mean, I think that, you know, we, I've heard that it's too, the building is too big. I'd want to see, is there anything else? Um, I'll say that there's about 20 attendees, probably many of them might want to speak. And so, Nancy, we could allow comment. We could say maybe, I just want to say maybe in like 10 minutes, maybe we end uh, comments or questions from the commission and we go to public comment. Uh, but I just want to say that, you know, the the amount of cars doesn't necessarily, isn't regulated by the local historic district in so much as it, you know, it impacts the other pieces of, of the design. Uh, you know, the fencing is regulated, the wall in the front, you know, any earthwork that's no longer at grade. Uh, so there's a number of pieces that would be regulated in, uh, in addition to just that, the building, the new structure. Thank you, Nate. Steve. Uh, Nate, actually, I'm surprised at what you just said, because during our discussion, we were trying to create language to make it absolutely explicit that parking is covered. But you told us, Commission, several times that parking is covered according to your interpretation of the language. So um, I'm a little... Uh, confused right now. Well, it's regulated in the way I discussed it, right? So, yeah. um, not saying like, oh, well, we don't think the, the number of cars is appropriate for the number of uh, users of a property. Or, yeah, nobody has said that. But you know, I think when we're saying that the the parking is too big or too small, I think someone would be, how does that relate to the structures on the property and the and the placement of it? And so that to well, me, that's how we, that's how we get at. You see a huge parking lot from the street. That's that's something you can see from the street, and that's something that you have told us is regulated by the bylaws. But beyond that, you know, I just want to say once again, I know this is not within the purview, but I think it's something that the applicants have to really consider. If there's only a one lane wide uh, egress, and there's cars going in and cars going out at the same time. Doesn't on a busy street that doesn't work, and I know that isn't covered by us, but it needs to be addressed. But in terms of the actual size of the parking lot, that's not um, there's no uh, precedent for that within within the um, for on a lot that size for a um, parking lot that size that can be seen from the street. Rita, I just want to say that I disagree with. Um... The proposal that we're a transitional neighborhood. I think we're a long, a long-standing family neighborhood, and that's how I see us. Um, I also think the house that you showed on Cosby as the example of another house in the neighborhood is a house that has uh, owner occupied with one rental unit. So, those are just my yeah. two comments. I think we should uh, start taking some questions from the attendees. So uh, Ken Rosenthal has raised his hand and would like to speak. Thank you, I'm Ken Rosenthal, 53 Sunset Avenue. But I happen to have been the executor of the estate for John and Gretchen Fox, whose house is right next door. And it's a house that's been ignored in all this discussion. That's 90 fearing a beautiful house that appears in the town records as non-owner occupied, but that's misleading because the owner is a family member and the house is a family owned, family occupied house. So that it is not a, a, a house that's given over to student residences. It's one that is a long-term family house. The, the Foxes wanted it that way when they died and we worked very hard to get a family into that house. The proposal here, the best thing I can say for it is that Kuhn Riddler terrific architects but what they are providing for you and 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 mr reedy is a, is a terrific lawyer but what they're providing for you is a, 
a, a property that will now have six units. By the town bylaw, that means four people unrelated are allowed to live there, and that will surely be uh, six apartments of students. That means 24 students. I submit to you that the parking lot, as proposed, is not going to be enough to accommodate them and their friends when they come, which means that since there's no parking on Fearing, and uh, I think none on, I believe none on Lincoln nearby, these visitors cars and maybe even some of the resident cars from time to time will be on the front lawn uh it's going to be very hard to do anything about that um and that's if 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 the students who live there behave and don't take in additional residents which often happens as we know now we can't predict that people are going to violate the law but we know that this happens i'm very concerned about this because the, the amherst community land trust and some of us are trying very hard to preserve neighborhoods as family neighborhoods. So this is not a transition neighborhood in the view of many of us who are working very hard to preserve neighborhoods, and I'm one of them. I want to also comment about the intrusion into the backyard space of this uh, res proposed residence. The space back there that runs all the way to Tanbrook and includes lots of proper, lots of open space that have been preserved by the residences that are on Cosby and Page and Beering and Lincoln, that space is now going to be intruded by not only this building, but the pavement there. And that's going to affect small wildlife that live back there, but it's also going to affect the way the neighbors behave back there. And it's already been commented that this building will rise up above and therefore look into the backyards of any number of houses that are on Lincoln and on Cosby and on Beering. So as you can tell, I think this is totally inappropriate um, and I oppose it. And I thank you for the time you've given me to make my uh, feelings known. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Melissa Ferris. Hi, uh, I'm Melissa Ferris. I'm here with my husband, Graham Caldwell. We are at 285 Lincoln. Our backyard is directly where we would be looking into the backyard of 98 Fearing right now. Um, one thing that we noted is that none of the um, views that were provided in the packet include the view um, from Lincoln Avenue, just a few steps down where you would clearly be able to see this house. There's a lot of sort of mythical greenery between um, our house and the, the house that's proposed in the renderings that doesn't exist. And there would be a very clear view to this house, which is enormous in scale compared to the building that's already on the lot. Um, and so, you know, it, it will absolutely change the tenor of our experience of the neighborhood. Um, and I, I really don't want to discuss anything that's out of you know, bounds for the LHDC, but it does seem to me that it's it's considerably more crowded than any of the other um, lots in the neighborhood that the scale of this building to the land usage um, compared to the rest of the neighborhood seems very far off and that there was no screening provided um, nor fencing between any of the houses um, beyond one small set of fencing between this house and 90 fearing. Um, but, you know, this house will look directly into my backyard and the backyard of, of several other, you know, buildings in the in the neighborhood. And that just doesn't seem to have been accounted for in the plan. But, but beyond that, this is just, you know, most of the houses in the in the historic district are to scale with the land usage. There's green spaces that buffer the homes from one another, and that will disappear with this development. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, Young Min Moon. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I am uh, owner of the uh, house directly abutting the 98 Fearing Street uh, to the west side. Uh, I understand that there's some uh, debate about whether parking is within purview of the local historic district. Uh, 
regardless, I'd like to submit my observation on a daily basis as to the parking uh, situation, because I get to watch the number of cars parked there every day and how cars move about. Uh, at any given time, there are at least six to seven cars already. At night times, there are more. Uh, last year, uh, before the current, uh, bef you know, the, before the tenants uh, changed to who are there right now, one of the tenants' uh, friend, boyfriend apparently, who visited very often, parked his car directly on the borderline, crossing into my yard and effectively destroyed my lawn. Um, so this is just one indication to the severity of the, you know, the heavy, uh, you know, you know, number of cars that's parked there. So if you add another 12 units or 10 bedrooms, adding to perhaps more than two dozen uh, units, uh, I think uh, it's very clear uh, where, you know, I don't know, I just don't see where all the cars will end up, uh, especially with that narrow uh, driveway and uh, just 12 units is not in, enough uh, in terms of the parking space. And also, uh, I'll speak to another uh, matter. Uh, I think uh, one of the, uh, I think Melissa Ferris mentioned, as well as Greta, that uh, this is not a traditional uh, neighborhood, but rather a settled, uh, uh, you know, residential neighborhood. And, you know, I am also an owner occupied <laughs> landlord and I was mindful of, you know, uh, extending my house and I just added 400, you know, square feet apartment, efficiency apartment for just one person, tenant. Uh, I think that, you know, if you were to uh, build this, I think this is really uh, out of proportion to the neighborhood. And I think it'll severely affect the uh, real estate uh, values of the neighborhoods. And I think there's an ethical implication of what's going on here, what's being proposed here. I recognize that the effort has been made to severely, uh, sig significantly reduce the initial proposal, but uh, I stand that this is still uh, out of proportion to what's uh, watching the neighborhood. Um, and yes, uh, I'll just leave it there. I, I think we've already discussed the chaotic you know, nature of the traffic situation on Fearing Street, so. Thank you very much. Thank you, young man. Uh, Jennifer Tubb. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Jennifer Taub. I live at 259 Lincoln Avenue and I'm speaking as a resident. Um, I have a couple of comments that I prepared to make, but I did want to add that um, you know, while we appreciate that, um, you know, in, just to respond to the introductory comments um, of, I think it was uh, Mr. Roberts, that yes, you know, 24 bedrooms were scaled back to 10, but that's in addition to the 10 bedroom unit that's, or three unit, 10 bedroom um, structure that's already on the property. So we're talking about a minimum of 20 students, but it could be 24, I guess you can have uh, four uh, per, per each of the six units. And when you were showing the map of other residences in the neighborhood and local historic district that you thought were in keeping with this proposal, there's none that house even 10 students, yet alone 20. And again, I guess to you know um, reiterate what uh, Greta said is when you showed the structure on Cosby, which is two houses from where I live, for the 13 years that I have uh, lived in my house, there's been the owner lives in that house and she rents to one graduate student or non-student resident. So there's never been four, more than three adults living between those two units and the accessory, what looks like an accessory dwelling unit behind it is the owner's acupuncture studio. So this is just in terms of how it looks and the massing and the scale and the number of residents totally um, out of context to anything in the neighborhood in the local historic district. So um, I do think that the scale, the size and the height of the proposed triplex mars the viewscape, as people have said, from four different streets, Lincoln, Fearing, Cosby and Page. 
and there is no other um, property in any of the, these streets or in the neighborhood that have a large multi-unit building essentially in the backyard. And it may be a deep lot, but it's a very narrow lot. And it will literally, I'm sitting in my kitchen on Lincoln and I can look out onto across the street is Cosby. And even though there's trees, I can see where this structure will be, this large structure in the backyard at 98 Fearing Street. And from my understanding, um, I understood that foliage doesn't actually count as screening or trees don't because trees can be taken down or they could die. So without some of the trees that were shown in the pictures, you're really looking right at this from at least four streets um, in the neighborhood. And I did um, want to also ask that if at a point the commission does issue a certificate of appropriateness, if you might, you know, in your letter or transmittal to the zoning board and of appeals and the planning board, you know, be willing to communicate um, and convey the abutters strong concerns about this project, because I would hate for a certificate of appropriateness to be seen as the neighborhood, you know, the, the abutters um, feeling comfortable with what's being proposed. But I do hope that you know, you will continue to, as you review this, um, scale back the project. And again, I also share all the concerns about the parking lot. I just don't see how a 13 car parking lot and that expanse of asphalt is contextually appropriate to the neighborhood or a local historic district. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Josie, you had indicated you wanted to speak. Do you still want to speak? Uh, we have Roger Maddich and Pat Brinkman. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Roger Maddich. I'm with my wife, Pat. We're an abutter on 26 Cosby in the backyard. Um, and I noticed that the properties from Lincoln all the way down Cosby back to Page and to <laughs> Benson are, there are 23 abutting properties with a shared green space um, with, with some owner occupied rentals, but mostly families, single family dwellings. This will totally change this neighborhood. There are, this property, this proposed building will be seen by at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight abutters. Um, there is no screening from our perspective. There is no screening from 90, it's, a, it's going to be 90, uh, 11 feet from 90 fearing, which is looking over the a pool. There's no fencing between us and this property. We'll have a clear view of it, as will many other properties. Um, and this is just not appropriate for a, for a neighborhood, which, as somebody has said, is not in transition. This would be a transition. This would be a cascading um, can I can I just say something too? This is Pat. Hi, I'm Pat, and I'm also at 26 Cosby. And I've actually gone over to 98 Fearing and gone in and knocked on the doors to meet my neighbors back there several times, and no one's been home. But they have about 12 people often sitting out in the back uh, and um, with neighbors and fun. And I think that's great for them to do. But in this parking lot, if this if the whole back their whole backyard is full of cars where are they going to gather as friends and neighbors um and i'm afraid that there's not much green space for them to do that and i know i think what you've done is really nice i think i like the architecture and i like the idea of having you know diversity in the neighborhood but i think we've got a lot of the diversity over on mcclure and <laughs> and we have people coming through doing all kinds of things in the middle of the night in our neighborhood right now um, so I, uh, that's all I have to say. I'm, I'm pretty emotional about this, so I'll end here. Thank you all. Thanks for all the work you're doing, both the LDC and, and the people who have done this design work. Um, it's a nice design, but it's not appropriate for this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Pat. Do we have anybody else who would like to speak? Well, I think we... 
have probably given you a sense of the concerns. We Oh, we do have two more people who'd like to speak. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Dorothy, you just, uh, okay, there you are, hold on a minute. You should be able to talk now, Dorothy. Okay, great, okay. Yes, I did wanna add something. Uh, it's really a question. Um, is, is it true that you're saying that the amount of asphalt is not regulated? Um, I was listening to this, the first half of it, I'm now home, but I was in the car and I was looking at the picture as I was driving, which is complicated, but what I was seeing was what I was, you know, something suitable to a commercial strip that I was driving through um, buildings and, they, and I say nice looking buildings uh, surrounded by asphalt. Uh, and I, I guess I had not thought that grass and trees were not part of a historic neighborhood. Um, I mean, our houses would not look like anything if it weren't for the fact that they were surrounded by lawns and grass and trees. Um, so is, is Nate, is that correct that you're saying that the amount of asphalt is not somehow connected to the idea of um, a local historic neighborhood? Right, so an exclusion is uh, terraces, walks, driveways, sidewalks, and similar structures, structures provided that they are substantially at grade. And so, uh, you know, that's one. Landscaping is also excluded. So, that, yeah, you know, that the visibility of something should not be, um, ex, you know, excused because there's existing trees because those could be removed. However, the commission has, as a condition, made um, made vegetation permanent screening so that it becomes like a structure, right? So we could require, mm -hmm. the commission could have as a condition certain screening that includes vegetation and then that has to be maintained. But the fact that neighboring properties have trees along their, their you know, the boundaries doesn't mean that this is now somehow excluded or not visible. We'd have to, you know, uh, you know, have a, you know, be able to look at it and say, well, if the, right, if the neighbors cut down those trees because they got old, what, what, what's the visual right. impact then? Um, so. Well, I, I do, I do think that the, um, the bylaw should be revisited because I think that um, I would hate to think what our neighborhood would, would look like without the grass and trees. It would be a very barren kind of concept. Um, I do want to add my voice to other people who said that use the word transitional. Um, transitional means it can keep on moving. And this structure, this development, if put in at that place, would in fact move the transition from this is no longer a residential area for uh, individuals and families, but it's somehow part of the university. Um, a nicer looking uh, residential impact from the one at the top of Lincoln that the university has added, but um, you know, very soon taking over the whole neighborhood. And I don't think that's, well, we don't think that's a good idea. Um, so um, I, I also think there's so many people whose property abuts this, who are residents who've been here for many years and including some new residents um, it's not that people don't want to buy the houses and move into the neighborhood and therefore it's run down and needs to be rebuilt in some kind of, um, you know, glorified rooming house way. Um, there are all kinds of people who have lived here and choose to live here because of what it is. So I, I do think it's fairly important to try to maintain some of those items. And I, I do think that what Pat brought up a few minutes ago was really interesting where do the people socialize? If you have a whole bunch of people living together, is, is this like an apartment building in New York City or is it some kind of communal situation where people can actually talk and gather? Um, that seems to have been cut out of it. So um, I, I don't see it as appropriate for the neighborhood, though it would be very nice someplace else with more, but, but, but not with all that asphalt. Thank you. Uh, Priscilla White. Uh, thank you, Dorothy. Priscilla White. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I uh, live at 318 Lincoln, around the corner from Fearing. And I moved here 21 years ago. And when I moved here, there were 10 families, uh, 10 children, um, living on the street and it was uh, 
a, a mix of some houses with students and many houses with families. One by one, the families uh, put their houses for sale. They moved for various reasons and they were bought all by developers, uh, landlords, and till aside from one woman on the corner, we're the last holdout on Lincoln. And so you might have said 20 years ago that it was a family neighborhood with some students and then became transitional. And we had hoped to age in place here. I'm 78 years old. And now I am had to decide to leave and give up my plan because the kind of building that's being proposed on Fearing Street won't affect me because I have to leave because of all the students, but it's going to affect families and residents, um, owner-occupied people on fearing. And uh, every single increase, um, and none of, you know, this the magnitude of the increase in this, this house, um, this proposal is stunning to me. It, there's nothing really, no other backyard that I know of in this neighborhood has had that that kind of a proposal. And um, and I'm just speaking up um, out of my loss of a place that I hope to age into and, and stay here till the end of my life. I've had to give up because um, because of houses being uh, in lots and um, homes being uh, overrun by, uh, I like what somebody said, this is a commercial property. And in this district um, was not intended to be a commercial district. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. Does anyone else have something to say? Or do we have a proposal? Uh, Young Min Moon? I'd just like to chime in on uh, or build upon the previous lady's comments. Uh, and I said this before at the last hearing too. And also to uh, relay my thoughts about the ethical implication. There's an economic and ethical and emotional implications to this project. Uh, the lady just spoke about her loss of her neighborhood where she wanted to retire and and uh, and her uh, and her spend her last years. Uh, that's very saddening to hear. And, and I think projects like this will eventually push people like us, uh, you know, on Fearing Street and, and and around this house, to eventually give up and you know, un, uh, unwittingly or reluctantly, you know, contribute to transforming this neighborhood into commercial district and largely entirely almost of student housing. And that's really sad. And also economically, it'll impact uh, the value of the houses. Thank you, young man. Nate. Yeah, I was gonna encourage the public to, you know, um, bring these comments to the Zoning Board of Appeals if this gets there, because a lot of these are appropriate to the Zoning Board. I think what I hear is that, you know, whether or not there are two family or three family homes in the neighborhood, just like the one existing, they look like a single family home. And so what's being proposed is a massive structure in the back that now has the look and feel and appearance of something that isn't single family. And so, you know, I think when we had this discussion previously, we had asked, uh, or it was suggested, you know, to right, minimize the scale and reduce the number of, of structures. And they've done that, but, you know, I'm hearing that it's, it's not, not sufficient enough. And so, you know, there are secondary structures on properties within the district on Lincoln and other streets. Uh, it's just that the scale and proportion between, say, the primary structure that faces the street and the secondary structure is different. And so, uh, you know, whether or not most of those comments that I've heard, you know, are really directed to the ZBA, but I think that the commercial appearance is, you know, something that is is valid. And so, you know, if there aren't any other comments, um, 
from the commissioners, I mean, we could let the applicants respond uh, or we could have suggestions or ideas that they could come back with. And so, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any other uh, comments from the commission, but what I've heard is that, you know, the scale is too big uh, and, you know, say even the placement on the property in terms of screening. So, you know, is there a way to, for instance, reduce the size of the second, the proposed structure, bring it closer to the house or something or add more screening? Uh, I mean, there's a, you know, the commission can keep the hearing open and then look at other options for what, what could, you know, this could adapt through the hearing process if, if you know, if need be. Thank you, Nate. So what I'm hearing, and I think Nate has just put it quite well, is that this structure as proposed is not acceptable to this commission. Um, we can consider something smaller, but I believe having listened to everybody, it would have to be significantly smaller. It could perhaps be uh, a one bedroom inside that garage. It could perhaps be a one bedroom addition on the back of the house. Uh, that doesn't jut out into the backyard in the same kind of way. But I don't hear us open to the idea of anything close to the scale of this particular proposal. Um, you mentioned in opening that this house is one of the tallest houses on the street, and you've proposed a second house with an even larger footprint that is within a foot of the height of this house. It is just out of scale with anything else around it. Uh, so even though you've proposed a, a lovely building, which would look very nice on an empty lot somewhere, it doesn't belong in the backyard of someone's home. Um, so uh, does anyone have any uh, proposals further uh, for this, for the architect or lawyer? Uh, Bruce. You're muted, Bruce. You're muted, Bruce. I was going to move something very similar to what you just said, Nancy, as a means of uh, moving forward. Um, uh, I don't know whether the applicants would be in a position to spontaneously respond to the kind of uh, challenge that you've put before them. Um, Personally, I'm not sure that I would. Uh, it, it needs to be down to a, a single bedroom or so, but certainly I'm still of a, a mind that this is out of scale. And uh, so it would seem to me that the uh, uh, easiest way to move forward would be to deny the applicants uh, to, to, to move that uh, a certificate of appropriateness not be granted. Uh, on the finding that um, that the, uh, the 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 of the inappropriateness in regard to scale, when seen in the context of the historic district, and uh, whereas the proposed building itself is reflective of surrounding Victorian and early twentieth century architecture, its scale is not. It proposes a, a significantly larger building footprint, and uh, and the appearance. Um, it, 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 and, and the size uh, of the proposed parking is dramatically out of scale with the other neighborhood properties. Um, I'm not convinced that that Nate's right or perhaps that he should be right. My sense is, so that was the end of my motion and uh, perhaps I should wait to um, speak. But my sense is that, and, and maybe I should ask you, Nate, is there any reason why we sh why why a motion to deny a certificate should be voted on or considered right now, or would it be prudent, or for any reason that I might not understand, which there could be many of, that we should vote instead to continue the heating with a with a clear impression given to the applicant that uh, that they haven't convinced us of the appropriateness. So I guess the question to you is: Do you would you counsel that we proceed with that motion? Or that we should move to continue. Well, uh, you know the applicant hasn't really responded to any questions or comments, so I'd have give them an opportunity. I think Tom's raised his hand, but you know to see where that will lead first, right? So, if we've heard and the commission said that there are certain elements that could be changed, if they're willing to try to make those changes, then um, you know it'd be it could move forward that way as a continued hearing to see what what you know what's being what could be brought forward. 
Okay. Well, when, when I when I started my motion, there was no hands up from the applicants, but now there is. Can I get a second for the motion before we go to a discussion? Thank you, Greta. Okay, Tom. Sure. Thanks a lot. Let me put my hand down. Uh, yeah, so I was just going to suggest that maybe give us an opportunity. This is my first time involved with this project in front of LHDC. Let's go back. It may be that we can't do anything, uh, or it may be that we can, but instead of you know, frankly, once you deny, then we've got certain decisions to make of whether or not we want to take another step. And instead of even being forced to take that next step, let us go back to the drawing board based upon everything that we've heard. And let's see if we can come up with something. And if we can, great. And if we can't, then maybe it's just a withdrawal or we give our best shot and you still say no. But I think at least because I don't know that we're going to be we're not convincing anybody today on this design. I know that much. And then let us at least go back and, and see if there's another way to do it. And it's not going to happen, um, you know, right now. So that would be our request, I think, is for a continuation and uh, have us bring something back, please. Thank you, Tom. Chris? Uh, having heard that and with uh, Greta's uh, uh, approval, I'll, I'll withdraw the motion. Thank you. And, uh, Charles? And then I would, Sorry. well, maybe I'll wait, maybe I'll wait to, if, if we... Uh, so I'll withdraw the motion and I could proceed to uh, move to a continuation, but let's Charles speak first. Charles. Bruce. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Um, yeah, I would, I guess um, um, it would be helpful to know what sort of thresholds would be acceptable. Is it really simply converting that existing garage into like a one bedroom studio unit? Is there some number of 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 units or bedroom count and and number of cars in the back that after seeing this design, this, the board has an intuitive sense would be appropriate. Um, so we have we have we have something to go for. I mean, I mean, you know, if, if it's if it's just if it's if it's yes if, if it's just thinking about that garage, and there's not there's not a lot we can do about that other than you know figure out a way to design. The, the owners could figure out a way, you know, with me or us or to design some kind of little unit in there. Would it, would it, would it, would they consider, would the board consider, you know, one more unit as an addition to that garage or something? And maybe, maybe eight parking spaces configured in a way where there's more landscaping islands between the parking spaces or where it's not, it's maybe skip, it's distributed around the site in a couple of different places as opposed, as opposed to one central parking area i mean i'm just gonna jump in you know one of the examples you showed across on the north side of here you know had i think it was like the goodell farmhouse farm property you know it's like had you know a connector building and then a barn but it was all once look you know read as multiple structures but connected and so again something i had said was you know could the building be made smaller and brought forward and almost look like it's an addition to the existing house uh, and have it read differently than you know a, a pretty big separate structure plunked in the middle of the yard. And so, you know, some of it is both the massing and scale and then also how it's related to the site, the existing site building and the neighboring properties. And so, I mean, it could be that it's a, you know, I, I don't know, speaking personally, it could be more than one bedroom, right? It could be two units still. It could be a few bedrooms. It just, it's like, what is the massing and scale and how does it read when it's, you know, um, in relation to that, the, the existing house and the neighboring properties? Yeah, it's 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 an interesting question. Like, how do you how do you philosophically approach something like this? And you know, in some ways, a simpler building makes more sense if it's just a connector to a piece to kind of a simple barn shape as a back building, as opposed to a building that one could say should be facing on the street. Um, what gets tricky is 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 um, if you get add on to the existing house and and keep the garage. If you, the sort of picture of the site plan, it's kind of hard to figure out where cars are going to go. So, you know, what we what we worked on, that's why the, the parking is between the two structures. I could see maybe some kind of a structure added on to the garage that's that, that's more of a back building and doesn't feel like a primary residence that has like maybe, you know, two, three bedrooms or something like that attached to the, the garage, which is a a studio unit or one bedroom. Rita? So I just, um, thank you, Charles. I just want 
you to remember though that our job is not to find it financially feasible for you. I know you bought the house two years ago, paid 800 something for it. It has three apartments. So the finances are on you and on the real estate agent that sold it. Um, so, but on us is keeping the, the scale, the structure, the um, in relationship to the other houses in the neighborhood. So, um, and to protect the historical district, that's all we care about. Um, I'm sorry if you don't think it's financially advisable, but um, I can't speak to that. Bruce, are you trying to speak also, or is that a, an old oh, hand? Uh, no, it's a new hand. Uh, I was uh, actually going to respond to the suggestion, I think, that Nate made about uh, building uh, or adding to the house. And Chuck, I think, has answered that uh, rather compellingly. I, I was concerned that it, once you start getting bigger units, you have sprinkler systems and so forth. And I was wondering whether there would be complications associated with the existing house that if we were to add to it. But I think uh, I'm, uh, I can understand the, 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 the answer that Chuck gave that the, the uh, proximity of the house and the barn would, it would push the cars into the backyard in a way that would probably be less uh, desirable. So I think um, I can understand that adding to the house in this situation is probably not a, a, a sound concept and that uh, either uh, expanding the garage in a way that doesn't need the garage to be pulled down or, and that would be nice, I think. But my sense is, I suppose, in answer to your question, Chuck, and I'm obviously speaking for myself and, and others will, say what they think but my sense is that uh, because my major concern has been the parking area and so forth uh, and the scale that, that that generates it seems to me that anything more than eight spaces is going to be problematic and there's already probably should be six now because of the minimal requirement that says two per unit and you've got three units already there so that's six and maybe if, if, if there was another unit added it could, could be a uh, I don't know, whatever, a, a two or three bedroom, uh, keeping the garage as you intended, uh, that seems like a good idea. Uh, that would yield a, a parking area of eight, eight spaces, and hopefully that could be organized in a way that wouldn't appear so out of um, extraordinary in the neighborhood. And, uh, and, and this is, you know, I didn't come prepared to, make a suggestion on the uh, uh, to respond although i see from your point of view it's a perfectly reasonable question that if we don't like this what what what, what do you need to do to 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 get our support so i feel obligated to do my best to answer that and it seems to me that uh, that the site is already pretty handsomely developed and uh, and and if 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 you were to do a good job of uh, showing me how the parking areas and so forth could be maintained in scale with another unit uh, and maintaining the garage and so forth somewhat in the way that you've done, because I understand your point about separating any additional building as opposed to adding it on. That's then I can imagine that possibly something could be, I could be persuaded. And I guess I'm saying that because I know you and your firm's work and I know Jeff and his firm's work. And so I think that you certainly have the design skills to do this. But trying to do this in a way that uh, can be managed by uh, an agreeable landlord, and that's where the zoning board will come in, because none of what I say is going to uh, make uh, any of the abutters feel a whole lot better about this. That's going to be the work of the zoning board, and that's not our job. But so far as appropriateness is concerned, so far as, and, and I repeat that I think the scale is the issue. And it feels to me that you guys might be able to make a one unit addition um, fly, but that's working off the seat of my pants. But I am trying to uh, respond in a way that might be helpful to you. I hope I'm not overstepping my bounds here. Karen. I have to go because I'm part of another meeting, but I agree very much with what has been said. I I think one more uh, unit perhaps can be fit in there, but um, not much more. 
But what I'm hearing, I think, is that uh, the commission might be open to a continuation of this. Uh, is that correct? I was about to and will move for a continuation, but I can't do that without a date certain. So we'd have to work with Nate to get a date certain. Or, or Charles, I don't know what what you're thinking. So we, you know, there was a waiver of time, so we have a we have a bit of time to keep reviewing this, uh, and then you know we can see what happens after that. So you know, is like three weeks enough? Like I was looking at May twentieth. Is it does it need to be longer? Um, well, I guess I guess a, a little a, one question would be, you know, I can probably come up with an idea. For taking the existing garage, maybe even just extending it and turning the garage and some addition onto the garage that's it's all low, no taller than the existing garage, into a into a some kind of a of a, of a decent unit. And I and if I could if I could bring something like that before the board in sketch form, where you know Jeff hasn't had to go and develop his you know. We know if he can make a storm drainage work with this building, he can make it work with a, with a smaller building. So that's not really so much of a question. Um, so if I could come forward, if I could come before the board with something in a sketch format that you could look at and sort of pass judgment on, then I could see that happening, working. I got I have to speak with my clients and see how they're feeling. Yeah, so we'd have to continue it to a day certain though. So, you know, we can always continue it and then continue it again if you're not ready. And so, you know, that's where we can't just, you know, say, oh, let's just continue it. So whenever we actually would have to um, have a time and day. Uh, and would we, would we say, you know, we could do two weeks if we wanted to do that. I mean, we did that with other applicants where we've continued it to look at massing models and things to say kind of a, a litmus test of like, okay, this looks, a, looks like it's going in the right direction. Or do we, you know, continue it to even longer, four or five weeks, uh, to have a little more developed plan? Uh, yeah, I'm, I have enough in the pipeline right now that I think more time would be better if I could have it. Um, does would it make sense to simply deny this certificate and let him start over again? It would give him more time. Freedom. Yeah. I'm, I'm inclined to deny, and um, it just seems so out of scale to me. And I think I don't want to get in a situation where we're, it's a, um, I don't think just because they propose something, then we're in a, a situation of compromising for it. Um, so they could do a fresh proposal that they thought really fit into the neighborhood, but this to me doesn't at all. So, so are you moving, are you moving to deny? That would be my thought. Do I have a second? I'll second. Is there more discussion? Uh, oh, we've got three people, uh, attendees who would like to speak. Dorothy? Um, I, I just think that some of the things that have been said here are, are getting off target. There's two different languages that are being spoken. The uh, local historic district committee is talking about houses and neighborhoods and history. Um, and I, I don't think it's their job to advise on how to make the maximum profit um, out of something. Um, I, personally, people I think are being much too nice about cars. I think it's been stated there's already too many cars back there already there's already a lot of people living on a residential lot it's already dense the idea that well maybe it could be a little more dense why i i i, I just I, i'm not catching what the message is here it's it's very very confused that that is not the job to how can you get as many people possibly as many cars as possible onto a residential lot in a residential neighborhood does does not seem to be what's supposed to be happening here so um, I I just agree with denying. Thank you. Thank you. Agree. I agree with Dorothy. Uh, Ken Rosenthal. There you go. Thank you very much. I agree with Dorothy Pam. It is not the job of this uh, commission to help the owners design something and to deal and 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 what has been asked of the commission now 
is for the commission members to imagine what Mr. Roberts is suggesting might happen there. Each commissioner will have a, 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 a mental sense of what it might be. That's not the way to propose this. The best way is to deny this now and let the applicant come back with a new application to show you what the applicant wants to do, knowing everything that the applicant has heard from this meeting and from the neighbors who have criticized the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Melissa. Hi, um, I, I, we want to echo what everyone else has said. Um, I, I personally would not feel comfortable just guessing what the structure might look like from a sketch that doesn't have any of the site plan involved in it because the garage is directly on our property line. So if you expand that garage, you're expanding directly next to our house. If there's no screening provided and there's no site plan involved in whatever sketch you might be bringing, beautiful though it may be, I also really like your guitar. Um, I do wanna you know, say that it would, it would make me super uncomfortable if that was greenlit on the basis of something that was rushed through in order to have you know, to make sure that your proposal is, is you know, fast-tracked, which it seems like it it's not working for the committee. It doesn't work for the neighborhood. It shouldn't be rushed through. Bruce. Um, I think there's a misunderstanding. Uh, the the uh, uh, Chuck's suggestion that he may develop a sketch would be to give an indication this is not going to be the basis for a decision. It's going to be the basis for proceeding. No. Um, and, uh, and 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 so as far as uh, you know, responding to somehow give some guidance to uh, applicants and so forth. We have done this before. We we definitely did this with Barry Roberts's uh, uh, application for development on Fearing and Sunset. So it's uh, it's, it's not not un un not unprecedented. <laughs> But that being said, it doesn't mean that we necessarily need to continue. Uh, we, we can consider a, a, a denial, I suppose. Uh, I would just want to make sure, Nate, that uh, sometimes uh, denying things uh, um, turns out to be uh, um, not the best course of action. Um, I don't want to go into all the details because I'm not good enough and I can't remember them all, but I do remember in the past, and I've been on this commission for seven years now, um, that we haven't always uh, uh, got the baby washed best by denying. Sometimes by continuing, uh, we do get uh, an appropriate result. As I'm not advocating continuing. I'm just saying that it's something we need to consider. That's it uh, for me. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Pearson. Uh, hello. I came in on here. Uh, I, we can barely hear you, Barbara. Can you speak more loudly? Uh, is that better? Somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> well, just just briefly, I certainly think that the design was completely out of scale for the neighborhood, but I do think that the commission at some point has to wrestle with the idea that we do need more housing in town and mm -hmm. how do we get it and is there a possibility of getting it the way people have recommended that it happens in the backyard? Um, is well, so that discussion I think is part of the historic commission, unless they don't want to just say, well, it has to happen somewhere else. That's all. So I I don't know. Um, that's all I'm saying. That we do have to we do have to think of the idea that there's not enough housing in the town. Thank you. That's not actually part of our job. Uh, Jennifer Chubb. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, well, I guess I just to respond uh, to what Barbara Pearson just said, and I know it's not within your purview, but you know, we're, I, I think we've always been, we have accessible dwelling units in the district and we've always been open to that, but those have a limit of a thousand square feet and the owner is required to live in the primary or the accessory dwelling. But I, I just wanted to say, I know Bruce, I think Bruce, you might be the only commissioner that was um, on the commission, maybe going back five years ago when Amherst Media brought its first 
um, application for a certificate of appropriateness to the local historic district commission. And we did deny the first application. Then they came back at, later with another proposal. And then that we continued those conversations for, you know, more than one meeting. So there's precedent for both keeping the hearing open and continuing it to a date certain, as well as, you know, feeling like the proposal is so far off from where we ultimately want to be that we uh, did deny the first um, application. So I just want to share that bit of history. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Nate. Right. So, you know, um, Jennifer mentioned Amherst Media. At the time, we had a legal opinion that, you know, a local historic district can't categorically say no to any development on a property. It's response to anything, you know, an application. So, you know, we can't say, well, this property is already too built out. We're not going to allow anything on it. And it could be that they come back and they have a modest addition to the garage and it works. And so a continuation could allow that to be um, discussed with the applicants and they could return. I mean, they could return. We could continue it for a few weeks, a number of weeks. They could come back and say, you know what? We don't think it'll work. And then we have the option of either denying it then or allowing them to withdraw the application. And so, you know, we've done this in the past. I think that would be that would be my recommendation, not to deny it today, allow a continuance to a date certain. And, you know, and maybe at that juncture, then it, you know, denial is appropriate uh, and, you know, or they have something that the commission can respond to. So I don't, you know, it's just, it's allowing the, the process to unfold. Uh, it seems like they're willing to try to make it work. Thank you, Steve. Oh, you're muted, Steve. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, I'm amenable to either way. Which does the applicant prefer a continuance, or do they want you know to us deny it and then start again from scratch? That's what I'm unclear about. Yeah, I I would have to. My my clients aren't here to, uh, yeah. for me to for me to talk to about this, so I I don't feel comfortable making this decision for them. And and um. I feel, but I, I, it's, um, are you, are you able to, are you able to see, um, Nancy, if, if, uh, Lorenzo or Andy or, or Pete McGee are, are, are here in attendance? Yeah. Uh, Lorenzo is, um, Tom Reedy had his hand up for a moment. I, Tom oh, might Tom. be able to answer this. Sorry, Tom. Yeah. Are you, wait, wait, how? Yeah. Um, I'm here. Yeah, I, I have to get in the car because I have a hearing in Webster. Um, yeah, I mean, I think continuing, and I don't want to take any words out of Lorenzo's mouth, but continuing, then we can have a conversation uh, after everybody's been able to digest all of the comments that have happened instead of making a snap decision tonight to say, okay, deny it, and that's it, resubmit something. Let's. I think it's just prudent for everyone to keep this one open allow the owners and developers to go back to the drawing board to see exactly what they could do. And then like Nate said, then next time either uh, allow a withdrawal, if you're not satisfied with the direction it's going in, deny it at that point. But it just seems prudent for everyone to continue this one to a, a date into the future to allow everybody to get their heads around it a little bit more. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Lorenzo. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. So you can uh, unmute yourself. Yeah, I, I'll. I just want to support what Tom just said. I mean, that's why we have Tom and and Charles to advise. This is uh, not a process we're familiar with, so that's why they're here. So, if that's Tom's recommendation, um, as one of the owners, I'll say that's the way we should go. Thanks. Thanks, Lorenzo. So at this point, uh, we we have a motion to deny that has been seconded. I think we need to take a vote before we do anything further. Uh -huh. So I'm sorry, Steve, did you want to say something? Well, can I re withdraw my second? You can. Okay, I would, I would like to withdraw my second. And then can I move? Uh, 
that we have a continuance then? You can. I move that we have a continuance. Do we have a second? Uh, Hold on. We need a date certain. I mean, we could stick with Mondays if we think, you know, the 27th of May is Memorial Day. We could, yeah. 20th seems like it's too soon. We could do Monday, June 3rd. We could do any, you know, any, I mean, any day of the week, honestly, like if we, but Mondays seem like it works for um, commissioners, right? We don't want to risk uh, attendance. So. So Monday, May 20th. I mean, we could throw that out there if that's soon enough. I mean, or if, or if it's too soon. Um, but otherwise, you know, it puts us with the holiday, it puts us another two weeks out. Chuck said he was busy, so June 3rd sounds good. I would yes, rather okay. them have more time to give a more yeah. thorough proposal. Thanks for looking out for my calendar, Bruce. That's great. <laughs> so, so June 3rd. Would June 3rd work for the other commissioners? It does for me. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Charles, does that give you sufficient time? Yeah, that gives me time. Thank you. We can do June 3rd at 3, and that's. Pardon? Uh, June 3rd at 3. So. Oh, at right, 3. Sorry. Uh, so, do I have uh, a second for? Continuing this to June third at three o'clock. I'll, I'll second. second that. Oh, thank you. Uh, then let's take a vote. Greta. Okay. Um, Nicole. Yes. Uh, Bruce. Yes. Steve. Yes. Uh, oh, and I'll vote reluctantly. Yes. My um, so that will uh, put us on June third at three o'clock um and we'll see we'll see you then i would encourage you to bring us something small because i think from what you've heard uh this commission is not open to something that's very large and it probably should stay within the footprint of the gar current garage frida and i would i also charles would um suggest that you look at the little the garage tucked back way behind on McClellan that has been a viable apartment a viable house for somebody for a long long time okay so, thank you and very sweet too they did a really sweet job and I don't okay. even think they have a car take a look thanks uh Nate do we have anything else that we need to discuss today yeah no, I'll say um I see Jennifer keeps raising her hand and disappearing on me, but um Jennifer. Yep, she's back. Hi. I'm sorry, just no quickly. I think Rita, I just want to clarify if you want to look at that accessory dwelling unit on McClellan. It I think it actually faces on Page Street. Is that the one you're talking about? No, yeah. I don't think so, but um Okay, there is I'll find I'm out sorry. the number. Okay. And there is one on on Page Street, that's the accessory dwelling unit to the house on the corner of Cosby and Page, which is also very contextually appropriate. Thank you. I know that one too. So, all right, thanks. That's that's right within my uh, walking radius on lunchtime. So I'll just take a stroll through there. I I will just add that those are like homes that are lived in by the person renting the accessory dwelling unit. So if you'd like to change one of those apartments to the owner of the house, we might be more interested in supporting this. Yeah. Yes, that's a good point, Nancy. Um, okay, uh, Nate, I think, I are we something. ready to uh, adjourn this meeting? No, no, no. I have a quick question. Yeah, Steve. Uh, yeah, uh, Nate, um, uh, um, the, the, CP, the CPA grant or uh, East Amherst LHD. I want to make sure that I don't need you don't need to send it out for RFPs. Yeah, and I said, Bill. I was going to check with a procurement officer on that first. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Okay. Hey, are you? Uh, is, is the commission done with me at this point? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we're we're done for the evening. So we'll see uh, Charles, you and Tom, or and everyone else back at um, three o'clock on June third. 
And for the commission, there could be another application or two, and we would schedule that new hearing for say four or later, 4.30 PM. Um, there's, you know, potential to have another, um, you know, we could combine this just so that we have, you know, we could try to get another meeting in, but this gives us enough time to advertise something if something comes in. Bruce, Bruce did you want to say something? Uh, yes. Uh, that being the first Monday of the month, I have a standing Habitat meeting at 6 p.m. So these 3 p.m. meetings are very good. Is there any reason why we wouldn't uh, do it at 3 p.m.? Did we? That, that's what we said, 3 p.m. Oh, he said, uh, and they said well, 4, I, uh, 4.30. I was saying that if we had another application come in, you know, if another project application came in. Oh, I see. We would, the, the meeting would run. We would still run. be going at yeah. 4 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for was, coming, Charles. Yeah, thank you. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Uh, approve. Uh, Greta? Second. Uh, oh, uh, yes, please. Nicole? <laughs> yes. Bruce? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I say yes, too. Thank you, Nate, for all your help with all of this. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.